torture because now I'm laughing. Hello, everyone. This is Donna Savage from Talk With Savage Desires. We're cracking up because we're speaking and we're having a great old conversation. And guess what? We weren't live. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my God. So I'm going to start all over again. This episode was brought to you by Nor Lotus, Everything Crystals. She That company is where I get all my crystals and my bead, my meditation bead, my, my, my waist beads, my anklets, and the whole nine yards. I also want to give a shout out to Business Takeout. They have created my 30 second video clip of, you know, just branding Savage Desires. So thank you, business shout out. Thank you, Noor Lotus, for supporting and all that nice stuff. And tonight we have beautiful, beautiful, phenomenal Kerry Sutra. Yes. Kerry, thank you so much for joining me tonight. It was a pleasure. You are welcome. I, I'm loving the space. We had a good giggle. And I can't wait for us to be able to have this conversation today, Donna. This is going to be really fun. Oh, it's it's, it's going to be so much fun. Carrie, yeah. and, and, you know, we're, we're going to digress and, and I'm going to go back. What le Before we do that, anyway, so for those who are joining, this topic is about her journey as a sex worker and where it had brought her today. Mm -hmm. But we won't talk about the today until after we cover the path, the history of her, her journey. Mm -hmm. So Carrie, mm -hmm. please explain to th those who are watching us, what brought you to be a sex worker, the journey that took you there? Well, it's, it's an interesting space when I look back now. Mm -hmm. um, for me, what it really was, was that I was a young mom and I was looking for a job or an opportunity that would let me go to school, manage my household, my kids, pay my bills, and allow me to go to school at the same time. Mm -hmm. And if I'm honest, you know, getting into the industry checked every one of those boxes. Mm -hmm. It was flexible. I could make my own hours. I could, you know, uh, work mostly nights so that I could be available during the day for my children. Mm -hmm. It really was a space that uh, allowed me a lot of freedom and I could work a maximum, a short amount of hours and receive a maximum amount of pay. So for me, it worked really well. So how was your mindset going mm -hmm. into that? Cause it, it is what it is. Carrie, you're a black woman. Yes. You know, either you're Canadian, but somehow behind there, there's some West Indian oh, background. 100% so, West Indian blood. Uh, my, mother's, <laughs> my mother's Antiguan. My father is. You see, what, you see what I mean? So with that mindset, cause you know, we're all we grow up. Mm. It, it is what it is. So how was your mindset? Yes. I know you said you have two children mm -hmm. to raise and, you know, and, and, and I know the story a little bit, but how did your, how was your mindset going into that industry? It, you know, it's so, when I think back now, I really entered the industry and I was in a broken space when mm -hmm. I began. And it wasn't because of that I didn't feel, you know, valued. In fact, I grew up, uh, and when I look back on my upbringing, it was actually quite wonderful. Mm -hmm. Where the break, I think, happened for me was in the relationship I was in with my children's father at the time. Mm -hmm. I realized um, the relationship was just, uh, you know, chaotic at best. We were two very young people that had no business having children and being in the space of where we were. Mm -hmm. And for me, what I found is that I was giving my body and in this space of intimacy with somebody who didn't respect or appreciated it. One of our biggest problems was infidelity. You know, I always call him, if you watch um, any of my own work, I call him the community man. And <laughs> yeah, I think my grandmother used to call them the same thing too. <laughs> but I didn't, I didn't understand what she meant until I got a community man. Uh, you were there, we all had a community man. And we all had the community man. We all and, and, had the community man. <laughs> and so, you know, that was my reality. And mm -hmm. I realized that for me, I actually, I was so angry with men. And I thought, I'm doing this for free, I'm doing this for free and getting nothing out of it. Well, mm. the opportunity came up that 
I could get paid. <laughs> um, that was appealing for me. Mm -hmm. I, why not look at that? And because I think I had a very healthy understanding of my body, mm -hmm. and I had a very healthy, um, you know, I was very educated about sexuality and sex prior to that moment. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I have mentioned before um, that I had always been one who read um, and, you know, I was always interested in the intimacies and intricacies of, of what a relationship would look like mm -hmm. and sex in general and in the pleasure of sex from a very early age. So I had read quite a bit I was very much about in that exploration stage, obviously why I had two children by the time I was 19. <laughs> Didn't read the birth control. You never read the fine print? Yeah, the birth, the, control, big the birth control piece. And even that, by the time I had my first one, it was a very calculated move why I had my second one. They weren't by accident. Okay. Uh, I was just a little bit too grown, but that's another story. <laughs> <laughs> and for me, I realized that that was one of the impetuses for me was mm. that I was in this space in this relationship with my with my you know children's father versus now stepping into this space where I was like, how else can I be in this experience of my sexuality? How else could it be channeled and and experienced? And for me, when I stepped into that role as, um, you know, knowing that I was starting to provide a service, that empowered me. Mm -hmm. That was a way of creating a whole new dimension to how I chose to view sex and sexuality. Okay, wow. So your first time, Carrie. Oh. <laughs> how was that? I don't want to talk about that. I don't want to hear about that. But your psyche yeah. going in, knowing that, okay, I know you mentioned earlier on, you know, you're doing the community guy for free. Yeah. This is money. This isn't you're getting paid, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. So how was it the first time? Were you scared? Oh. What was going through your head? Did you have a butter knife just in case anything happens? <laughs> like, <laughs> what the heck happened? Where was your head? <laughs> it, it was. It was one of the most nerve-wracking things I've ever done. Like it really was, you know, um, I was terrified when I walked into that room. Well, let me take you back. Um, for me, in my experience with this, I how it actually started was I had a girlfriend give me a call mm -hmm. and we had seen, and I'm dating myself because this is a long time ago. Um, <laughs> we're, talking, we're talking some years back to give you an understanding. I have a 30 year old daughter now. And okay. at the time that I was in the business, she was four. So okay. we're giving you we're giving you some time here. <laughs> Do the math if you want to. Do the math. <laughs> and what it was was my girlfriend and I. I was blessed. I had this network of young mothers um, that we used to really work together. You know, there was about six of us, and we would we were like ride or die for each other. Mm -hmm. This day I realized, and I shout you out, you guys know who you are as I tell this story. <laughs> uh, if one of us didn't have diapers, none of us had diapers. You know, it was that kind of an experience that we mm -hmm. had. And so we were all struggling. And I remember this particular girlfriend called me and said, you know, there's an ad in the paper. She had seen a newspaper ad in the paper looking for escorts, looking mm -hmm. for young women. And it said, you know, you'll just go on a date type thing. Mm -hmm. So I was like, she was like, girl, do you want us to maybe go and make a phone call and find out? And I was like, I'm down for the phone call. And then she goes, but I'm going to tell you, because she was a little more worldly than I was mm -hmm. at the time. And she said to me, you know what? You, there, there's going to be more involved with it, but let's make a phone call anyway. So we mm -hmm. went and we ended up going to the agency. Um, now the agency, the way it works, they never talk about, you know, what actually happens or what is transcribed. What they tell you to do is talk to some of the other girls. Ah. And so you go, there's a lounge. There was this big lounge where the women would sit, where the young women would be. And we, uh, had some conversations and what was so funny about it is my girlfriend, you know, she was like, okay, you know what, let's do this. And I was like, okay, let's do this. And then at the end of it, she backed out. <laughs> she ran. 
(laughs) We put ourselves on the roster and how it used to work is the, you know, there were a series of ads put out, Mm -hmm. Uh, you know, the clients would call in, they would read out your descriptions and you would make a date. And um, for me, I got my first date and I went and it actually ended up being not one, but two gentlemen in the same night, same time. And (laughs) definitely I had never been in the experience of, it was uh, a first time on a lot of fronts because that had not been something that I I'd ever done. Did you, you, didn't you think about running when you see this? Like, well, I knew what I was walking into. One of the things is that there's some, there's some talk that happens before. Right. Okay. Um, so I knew that uh, it was to have, you know, spend some time because mm-hmm. that's what it is. You spend time, mm-hmm. with, you know, these two gentlemen and one of them was actually, it was going to be his first time. So, okay. I was, you know, seeing it almost as an honor that I got to, you know, virginity. Yeah, to to stand in the space of this guy's first opportunity. And, um, and yours too. And mine too, right? And so, you know what? I came into that with that. I came mm. into that experience saying that, that this is a first time for, for both and for all. And so let's approach it in that way. And not only was it this young man's first time, he had, um, let, let's just say that the reason why it had to be arranged is because his member was more on a, a very small size, like one inch uh, erect. Okay, okay, I got what you're saying. One inch erect. And so with that being, with that being his truth, you know, it really struck me that, you know, I was, there was, there was really more to it than just it being dirty men wanting to have this experience. After we exchanged and and spent our time together, he was so grateful. He actually broke down in tears. I'll never forget it. He actually broke down in tears because every time he had ever gotten close or intimate with somebody prior to me, Mm -hmm. um, you know, he was rejected. He was laughed at. He was. Yeah, you know, I mean, all of the stigmas that come up. Yeah, Nat- Natalie just said, um, "Not one inch." Oh no, <laughs> no you know, because right. right away these are the things that we see. You know, those guys are are laughed at. It, uh, it, I- it is what it is. So I can honestly see where this is coming from. So this agency, does yeah. agency like those still exist? I don't think they do in the same way. Mm-hmm. Well, I'm talking about a time before the internet when the yellow pages were still around, right? Mm-hmm. The yellow um, pages. Yeah, the yellow pages were a thing, trust me. Hi, um, Colleen. <laughs> and, and so, um, but I think what I have noticed, uh, I've kind of always kept my ear, my ears to the ground and still been in the spaces of the movement of the age of the sex industry. Mm -hmm. Um, What happened was with the internet that opened up very new ways and doors uh, of being. And um, I think that brings in where we have to challenge and talk about the ideas of sex work versus sex trafficking and how those experiences, um, I think I want to make a, a, like a, a disclaimer against because one is very different from the other, but I think oftentimes we confuse that the two or we infuse that the two mm-hmm. are the same. And I think that the way that we've seen the sex industry evolve has had very much an effect on how sex trafficking is standing up in um, a much more prevalent form. And when we, you know, a sex worker is somebody who is in the space of this consenting with full autonomy and Mm -hmm. the way that we use sex work in general and our sexual experiences. And this is something that I learned through my course of speaking in the industry of being in the industry as well, is that when you have agency over your sexuality, it Mm -hmm. is absolutely a space of empowering us. And the only way that women of, in particular women of color are allowed to be in the experience of their sexuality is normally when we are viewed from spaces of our victimhood. Okay, so what would you call um, 
I'm not sure if it still exists, because this is a word that I know, a pimp. Because you're saying, you know, you have the agency, you have a pimp. I mean, me hearing of a pimp sounds like it's, it's, it's forced and it's not, you know, for some, I don't know how it is. And, you know, just by watching movies, you, you, heard, you, you hear of a pimp. Very real thing. And right? that, that is on the realm of sex trafficking. And mm-hmm. you're absolutely correct in that space, Donna. And I want to talk about that because there was a time from what I have seen and the evolution of this space, there was a time where uh, you could be of your own agency, like I was being um, a sex worker. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? I mm-hmm. didn't have a pimp. There was nobody that was um, over me. I worked with the agency for a while and then I went on my own and started, I pulled my own client base and did it that way once mm-hmm. I was, you know, a little more established. Yeah, get away, take the middleman out of it. <laughs> exactly, and I had developed my own client base by then. Mm-hmm. Um, however, what I have seen is there has been an incursion. I always say that when we heard, when um, I'm in love with a stripper by T-Pain came out, we saw a shift in the way that the industry went and it started to become glamorized. And even though that culture did exist, you know, the idea of, the pimp ho um, ideations that did exist. And that comes back from our our culture, you know, that that was a North American cultural thing where some of the ways that we would stand up, you know, even in the early seventies or eighties was that pimps could have, you know, had their whole kind of harems and that that element of some of that was even glamorized to some degree. So there was those elements and and ways of showing up and they would have like pimp awards and I think it's in Detroit. But Um, but, but Carrie, not to not to cut you, but mm -hmm. um, sex workers is like one of the longest business in the world. Sex workers have always it's it's been out there for eons. Yes. It right, is, it's not called the oldest profession for nothing. For nothing, right? Right. So it, there must be a reason why it's well, so old and still prevalent and still going strong. Well, and that's the thing, and the idea that we demonize something that is such a natural and normal occurrence, um, I think, is something that we uh, that is due examination. And what I liken it to is that I would argue that when we look at sex work and the power that the female body and womanhood exudes, we are in our highest service when we are in true um, authority and agency to offer our bodies in the ways that we deem fit. Okay, some people may not agree with you when you say naturally occurrence because they're never gonna say, do you know what, I'm not gonna be, I'm not getting paid to have sex. You know what I mean? And using their bodies out there. Oh, absolutely. But what I'm saying is that we have demonized this Mm -hmm. idea. And Mm -hmm. why is it that, see, when you think about how we look at marriage or why we are in relationships, there is an exchange. A Mm -hmm. lot of times we are told not to date, you know, your partner if they can't provide for you, if they can't Mm -hmm. offer you these things. And what a part of that exchange and why even why we form relationships at a fundamental biological level is this idea that when we are going to have children, you want a partner that is going to be able to provide for you because the idea of having children or looking after children is an all encompassing space. So you need a partner that can exchange for you. So what I'm talking about is that we have these ideas of commodifying intimacy and sex in in ways that we don't look at. And I offer, and I argue that I think for us to unpack that is an interesting space and conversations worth having. And in fact, how we have tied sex into capitalism and Mm -hmm. in the ways that we have shown up in Mm -hmm. the patriarchal system, our Mm -hmm. sex and how we have um, put in these layers of shame around our sexuality very Mm -hmm. ties into the autonomy and agency of a woman's body and the Mm -hmm. money that she can make. So you're seeing there's good money in it, eh? Well, there is. There absolutely is. People desire things that are forbidden and that they can't have. And there have been ancient societies where women have not stood 
in fear of their sexuality. The Karma Sutra is a representation of what sex can offer and, and be in those spaces. And there are places where sexual acts are all over, um, you know, uh, temple walls where sex wasn't validified in the ways to which we see it now. Your whole body structure changed Mm -hmm. When um, you talked about sex, like it's like you breathe it, Yo. and the reason why I the reason why I, I notice it that is so many women doesn't embody the exchanging of energy. Any when anyways when it comes to sex, yeah, you know, and um, I I know a lot of people are going to be hoon and hum and they won't they won't understand the comparison, you know, I'm married, you know, it, it's my husband's will to give, 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 and to support, support, support. And then, you know, I'm not like those women who's going out there getting money for exchange. But at the end of the day, it's all exchanging of energy. It's exchanging of money. It's exchanging of time. It's exchanging of having kids is what you're saying. Yeah. Is what I'm getting from this, right? Absolutely. Yeah. And you're hitting the nail on the head. And what I think it is, is being in understanding that there is this exchange of energy that is happening mm -hmm. when we are in these spaces. Mm -hmm. And so mm -hmm. for me, what it is, is I believe in us recognizing that our bodies and that exchange, that pleasure, that power, that service are mm -hmm. all interconnected. And it's how we choose to channel and move through those spaces of those energies that so, explore, afford us our truth. So how does how would you recommend someone? Because in, in an industry like that, you have to separate oh, your vagina from your heart. There have to be some separation. So how would the conversation look? You know, how are we going to teach people or say, separate, separate your pum pum, sorry, your oh, vagina God. from your heart. I don't use the word vagina. I like pum pum better or I like pussy. So <laughs> hey, I like pum pum good girl. Use pum -pum. You know, because a lot of them can't, they, they can, you know, I, and, and I, I don't know if it exists anymore, but I remember people said, oh, I can't even kiss somebody, somebody if, if I don't love them or if I'm not attracted to them, or I can't sleep with someone if I'm not attracted to them because they're not separating their vagina their yoni or their pum pum from their heart Absolutely. or what is it that they want right so it's going to be so hard Big carry so many people still not is not accepting having even sex with their partners 100 percent. and you I, know so I, it's going to be so hard for anybody that's listening to this i'm sure they're shaking their head because mm -mm, right? mm -mm, they're not understanding right um and, let, and me I, see. I, I, let me speak to that I, I really love this conversation for that because this is not something for everyone. Uh, oh, heck and, no. And, and I really want to put that forward. Mm -hmm. not every woman and, and, you know, is built or wants to do this kind of work. Mm -hmm. It is a lot. It is a lot. It is a lot. You mm -hmm. are opening yourself up to the energies of other people. Exactly. And, and you have to be really aware of that when you are doing this work, because yeah. it's about being able to move through. How you have to, you it. have to, yeah. So um, our, that out there. And thank you for putting it out there that whatever she's talking is not for everybody. Right. You know, it's just like construction is not for everybody. <laughs> so Arlie is saying, it seems at times the male partner is not there to support and it, and it's a way to support yourself and the children if there are children involved and there and be there for them. And I agree. Yes. I totally agree with her. And you touch something, Arlene. I really love it. I'm snapping because I'll I snap think, with you too. Right? Because I think that what I talk about is is unpacking these constructs to which we are told sex and love and tradition must stand in play. What I offer is that when we are able to recognize that we are programmed from a very young age, especially as women, that our bodies and our pleasure aren't really for ourselves. It is about the experience that we give to our partners. Mm -hmm. It's not really about us being in our bodies, being in our pleasure. Mm -hmm. It's about us being in service to those who we just, you know, biblically, I, I was married into church, you know, that onto, onto my husband, I mm -hmm. must, you know, submit. Mm -hmm. And 
I think that when we start to unpack those ideas and recognize that we can reclaim our bodies, we can reclaim our pleasure, it opens up a whole new avenue of how you can exist in your sexuality. Mm -hmm. And that was what it was for me. Mm -hmm. I came out of that experience, Donna, with my ex. And um, it was, you know, I was supposedly doing everything right. I was being faithful and in with a partner and recognizing that that was making me so unhappy and unfulfilled. Mm -hmm. And when I opened up this door, I actually came across a lot of just genuine men. And, and I also have to speak from the experience that one, I was in a willing space. So you're it, open. Yes, I was open. And I was not, um, you know, I wasn't on a street level. There were no drugs involved. There was nothing like that. I was dealing with a very, um, a, a, an echelon of, of men that were willing to pay for mm -hmm. it. And what I found is that because it was an exchange, there was value seen in that space. And it was a unique way for me to be able to be in the experience of pleasure and sexuality. Mm -hmm. that most people don't get that opportunity. To Not at all. Not at all. Yeah. Um, ask Donna Marie said, and she says, love this because it illustrates how women can be in control of their body, their own body. And we are so powerful. Yes. Yeah. Yes, Natalie. That is so true. We are such a powerful being, but from a young age, remember we're always being brainwashed. And you said, it's, um, Kerry, you know, it's about the biblical days, but remember back in the days, even now, some part of Africa, women walk around naked and they envision and they love every part of their body and they're, they, you know, no matter what they look like, you know, because that's what they're used to. But it's, when society started, we were all naked and doing things, you well, know? I have a, a book that I often, let me find it. I brought it out, I think the last time, but I'm going to bring it out again because I think that this is such a valuable space. Ooh, wait. Wait, wait, okay, the other way, the other there way. We go, there we go. Oh, okay, no. What is it? What is it? Sex at? Oh, that's um, there we go. <laughs> Gotta get it in the camera. Sex at dawn. Of sex at dawn. It is by Christopher Ryan. Now, this book is highly controversial, um, but I think he makes some really good points because he breaks down how sexuality has evolved over the last several thousand years and before we became an, in the, into the agricultural age. And that's when um, agricultural, when we started settling down and needing spaces where we needed bodies for, you know, you know, keeping and tending our grounds. It built in the capitalist system mm -hmm. uh, that we exist in. And that is also a time where women became much more of a commodity and it became much more important to be able to claim lineage. Mm -hmm. So for men in particular, when they had to start looking after families and looking after things, it, you know, it just made sense that they didn't want to be looking after other people's children. And so with that evolution, which is biological, it's, it's a biological space, we have to question whether monogamy or the idea of monogamy is for every culture and, or for every person. And that's what this book talks uh, about. And it's funny you said that, but stick a pin in there for two seconds. Yeah. Nora is saying not everyone can do that. Yeah. Such separation from mind and body. And you're right, uh, Nora. Not everybody can do that. And that's what she's saying. It's not for everybody. It's just like construction is not for everybody. Right. And when, it's really not. So, sorry no. to interrupt, Donna. I no, 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 no. Girl, we, you know, we're both passionate about what we do. It's so right. interrupt. It's okay. Um, so, yeah, so go ahead. Yeah, I was just going to say to your point. That is why you see for a lot of women, you know, it, it also comes from the space that you are doing this work from mm -hmm. recognizing for me, um, uh, one of my, one of my passions is offering, um, avenues for women who are in the industry to be mm -hmm. able to replenish because it is energetic. You are putting out what you're putting in, exactly. but that's also why you see a lot of women that will turn to you know alcohol or drugs and i saw that a lot around me you know young women or women who were just battling the demons that come with this space having to um open yourself up and and you know become something else and literally i know like for myself i had an alter ego 
and she was who came forward. I'm a Gemini by nature. Hold too. on. So you had an alt uh, oh, yeah. alter ego going into your sessions? Oh, yeah. Hello. Well, going absolutely. Like, what was your what's her name? <laughs> her name is Eden. And she's still there, actually. Of course. Eden is still somebody uh, that I play into and explore now. But Eden was very much the vixen. Eden was the sex goddess. So Eden was that. I'm going to go into your business for two seconds. So were you also a dom in any of this thing? I, Anything I've, played, that I've played some of those roles. <laughs> I definitely have. I mean... <laughs> What, that is one of the things that I loved about this experience was that I got to play. Wow. I mean, I had clients that, and what was so interesting about um, dominant being a dom and domination dominatrix, and what you'll find with BDSM, um, especially for people who are wanting to be subs, is it's normally very affluent very established people. Mm -hmm. People have to make decisions all the time, really want to have the experience and knowing of what it is to be in a submissive role. And so when you step into this uh, idea of being a dom, a lot of the times it's not even about sex per se. It's about creating the experience of safety. And dom, BDSM is a whole... Um, realm and another conversation we can have and really dissect. We will. <laughs> <laughs> well, really I, 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 I want to dive into what you're doing now, but before I'm going to tell you a joke quickly. Mm -hmm. So several years ago, someone, you know, because I, I'm, I'm a, a sex coach and intimacy coach, so it's, they assume that I do stuff like this, right? So he asked if um, he could, if I could be a dom for him and I'm playing with the rule because I thought he was joking. And I says, um, he asked me if I've ever done it. I said, yes, with my lights, I've never done it. So the guy sent me a picture mm. of what he wants his ass to look like. And Carrie, I threw up in my mouth. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It depends. <laughs> right? And that's, that's the thing. I think that he got some real, like, his ass was is on fire. Yes. And see, for some people now, <laughs> right? What one of the things is that there's this ideation or idea that uh, you know, you can't refuse anything. Mm -hmm. for, for the most part, it was my rules. I had a set of rules, and in my rules, you know, I could refuse certain things. Like, for example, something like that. Maybe, actually, maybe not at that point in my life. Yeah. <laughs> but then maybe I would have probably done it because I was that angry. Yeah, that I, sounds I, like it. it. Yeah. Right. I had anger, anger on him. him. Right. Well, I, but it's it should be very controlled. And this is the thing. There's a skill set that comes from being a dom that I didn't have then. That maybe I I see the the what that entails. And mm -hmm. I would bet that depending on if that's what he liked. Hopefully it was done by a person who's experienced in the field as mm -hmm. a master. Well, he uh, liked it, so obviously it was. Yeah, right? <laughs> and it, it just, it's knowing if you can be in those realms and what mm -hmm. your limits are. Like there were times that I wouldn't take clients. There were th some things I would not do, right? Because mm -hmm. it can so, go extreme, eh? Well, it, some people really pay for their fetishes, right? Wow. And, you know, depending on what your stream was, that was a thing. I, I did a lot of work with, and this is going to sound, um, I, I'm not sure how this is going to be broached, but I'm going to give a trigger alert before I even mention it. I used to look very young. I used to look like a, you know, a, a 12 year old girl. I could potentially look that way. So that was a turn on. So that was when I had a lot of male clients, a lot of clients that wanted me to be a little girl. And I would take those calls at a premium but I would 100% take those calls because in my mind, and I had conversations with these men as well. Mm -hmm. and in my mind, I would much rather you come see me of full autonomy as an adult um, versus you maybe taking those proclivities and mm -hmm. them elsewhere. Mm -hmm. wow. And for a lot of men, this was their outlet. That, that was their way. That didn't even cross my mind. This is how... 
you know, shallow is so this is where these great conversation needs to be had to let people know what's going on, right? Um, ask Donna Marie saying, I absolutely love the fact that you have an alter ego when counseling my clients to help them build confidence and make them connect with their alter ego. It's another power tool. Yes. So there you go. I do that with my work now too, recognizing that we are, you know, I think the idea that we are one fused thing is something. Mm -hmm to challenge mm -hmm. we are many different pieces of ourselves mm -hmm. and Eden is one of mine Eden is just simply a piece of so, that space so Eden Eden yeah, I'm going to meet you one day one of these days we're going to have a costume party you better bring Eden out oh, no. <laughs> you don't got to speak twice Eden likes costumes she likes to play girl she that's the thing and you know I, 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 next time we need to uh, I need to for you to come on so we're going to be talking about yeah. marriages long-term marriages that to bring up their spices to dress oh. up but we're not talking about that tonight that's going to be another episode but yes. Carrie what Absolutely. brought you here at this moment in time mm. where that now you are here teaching intimacy relationship counseling you know sexuality tantra loving so yes. You know, coming from that space of mm -hmm. being a sex, a sex worker, because, you know, you were free and you were out there doing your thing. And, and I understand that you understand it, you know, and, and it's not everybody that's, that's there with you, mm -hmm. you know? So let me ex explain to me from a sex worker yes, <laughs> to this powerful being yes. of where you are today. And that's where I met you. Yes. At this powerful being at this spot. And as I said to you, when I first heard about it, I'm thinking, my girl, where have you been? I thought I was only a black woman out there talking about these issues and bringing them to the forefront. I didn't realize it was another awesome being out there. Oh, so, Carrie. I, I adore you for that. And thank you. <laughs> thank you for affirming me, for celebrating me, because I agree with you. This is work that we have to do. And I, for me, the journey began, as I said, I think I've always just been sexual. Mm -hmm. And then after I went through, you know, um, my, my, my little stint here, what happened was I got caught my i never really hid it i i will say that i never really hid that i was in the industry it's never been me mm -hmm. uh i whatever i do i go big or i go home hold and on before you say that how long were you in the industry for, industry for i was in the industry for approximately two and a half three years okay I, I, and it was enough like by the end of it um i actually didn't get out of my own free will I, I got out, it really wasn't. I was doing very well. I was actually starting another business at the time. Um, I was able to save enough money where we were buying a house. And, um, you know, I, I it, it did well for me. So f I, I actually was about to take it to another level. Uh, but my parents found out and and i who have tattled on you who tattled oh, on you that's a story on its own <laughs> i have i have an uncle <laughs> you gonna just leave that right there i'm gonna leave it right there yeah, you, know who, you know who you are right anyway so <laughs> Um, I also used to dance in the clubs at that time as well. I was a mm. I used to dance as well. Didn't like wow. this. I liked escorting actually. Um, that to me is where you really have to have a mind separation. It's a the dancing. Dancing is a much really? much more challenging space. Then oh my God! You see, I didn't know you dance. Oh, I know we want to talk about your journey now, but <laughs> to me. The dancing would be less more, yeah. is less intrusive no, than oh, really. Actually, what I found with dancing, one, I was an incredible hustler. I've always been really good at connecting with men, right? Mm. Or connecting in general with anybody, but with men in particular in that space. But what it is, is you are much more on display and it's much more about your physicality and, and, being of a black body, we are not first on that totem pole. So what I found is I had to really alter my space and how I would, you, you got to hustle. You got to be a, a woman. Because for me, I ain't just there to have drinks with you and look pretty on your arm. I'm about making sure 
that I'm going to get what I needed out of it. Mm. And I found that it was much harder to make those kinds of connections because it's in this atmosphere where it's all about your body. It's all about, and while it was less intrusive for the most part, right? Um, you're not actually having physical sex. It's about creating that illusion though. Mm. It's, that seductress. it's really about being put on, on um, a, a, a stage and you're almost seen like chattel. Like they would do these things like midnight calls where, you know, they'd line up all the girls that were working and, you know, you'd have to do a joint dance. And it often reminded me, and I think maybe this is what it would be. I often were, was taken back and maybe it was an epigenetic memory, but it reminded me of, of an experience of what maybe my ancestor would have gone through when she, they would have been sold into slavery. You know, the idea really? of standing on that stage and being walk awful. around yeah. and being prawn and looked yeah. at and I want it her, the bidding starts. Okay, yeah. okay, okay. I was not in my full autonomy in that space. Whereas I only danced for about six months because for me, the money was good, but I worked harder and I found that I wasn't in the same element of control because I chose who I wanted in those spaces when it was um, much more intimate, right? Mm -hmm. I chose, and a lot of those times, those clients became long-term. We've developed relationships. And I think that's pivotal. Whereas when you're more in um, on a stage, it was much more of a revolving type door type scenario. It was a much more challenging space for you to work in. Wow. Mm -hmm. All right. Now, so your parents found out. I'm yes. sorry. Now we're going back and forth. Yes, but for those who are joining, this is really juicy. You guys have to watch it on the replay. Yes. We're talking about Carrie Sutra past life as yes. a sex worker and what she's gone through and yes. the different challenges and and, you know, just being open. So you definitely have to watch this on the replay and let me know that you watch it on the replay. But now we're going back to Carrie. Carrie, uh -huh. when mommy found out and daddy found out, yeah, what happened? Yeah, yeah. Oh, it was an uproar, you know? I have very traditional West Indian parents. Mm -hmm. And uh, like, there were so many, the, the reverberations of that. For me, I felt no way. I really mm. did. And, and I'm still kind of unapologetic about it, if I'm honest. But I know for my parents, it broke their hearts. Even to this day, I broke my father's heart. In all honesty, our relationship has never repaired from that experience and the shame that it brought to their space. And I live with that. You know, I live with that. And as I, you know, unpack it now, I recognize how I didn't take that into the space of their truth, right? Mm -hmm. So um, I, I hold that, but they, I decided to get out because I knew, you know, I'm still, I still, I'm a traditional girl in some yeah. ways, right? Yeah. And it was time, two and a half years? It's okay. Uh, I, you know what? I, I really wish I, I if, if I'm honest, I wish mm -hmm. I was, I had stayed in a little longer. I, <laughs> I do. Um, <laughs> I, I learned a ton about uh, business, entrepreneurship, and it actually set the stage for my later endeavors. Mm -hmm. actually. Um, I got into finance after I left the industry. If my kids uh, learn to teach, count your money, eh? Nobody's uh, not stealing. Uh, <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> It's so true. Glad to put that out there. <laughs> it's true. Uh, I, and I, I met a lot of businessmen. You know, one of the things that happened, um, it was a hundred percent. I saw your thing there, Mark. Was it for the money or was it something you wanted to yeah, do? He missed, I guess he missed that part. So you can reiterate for me, please. Yeah, I was gonna say you can you can watch the replay, but yes, it was one hundred percent about me um taking this journey into something that I wanted to do on on my own, and then the money was damn good, and I saw opportunity in the space as well. So she snapped it just oh. mm, and she lived well. <laughs> what, Thanks, what, Mark. What, what one of the bribes what ended up happening was that uh, i won't say it was a bribe but one of the um you know conditions that my mom and i came to or my parents and i came to was that we actually bought a house and they offered up a, an amount of the deposit and i had half and they put in the other half 
So it was quite a successful time. And um, I just offer that up that for me, you know, I, I it, it can be a world and I, I please, I wanna stress this. This is not something for everyone. Mm -hmm. And it can be a, wor a world where you get tangled in a web. And there were some um, repercussions. Like I, I have an ex-husband that came out of that space. And, um, you know, that's another story that'll come. I broke one of the elemental client um, elemental rule, rules of being uh, in this industry. Is oh my God, I know you want me to ask, and then we don't have, yeah, we definitely have to come back for that because what the heck? <laughs> I dated a client, man. And let me tell you. You guys got married. We And we got married. And wow. that, that is a story to tell. Oh my gosh. So I know, oh my God, like we're, we're, we're running out of time and we have so much. So just to just wrap things up. Yes. Carrie, and I know you keep iterating that this business is not for everybody, you know, and, and, and I love the fact that you said this because it's definitely not for everybody. I don't want anybody to misconstrue anything that she said, because everything she said for me, it's about her. It's about her her journey because mm -hmm. you know they're, they're you know it's not all apples are the same apples yes. but what we're trying to do or what we're what we believe is that we have to normalize sex and sexuality mm -hmm. and that's just the basis you know Henny, way which way that you want to to get some money if you need it or, or whatever no, no excuses or if you just feel like doing it because it's fun and we talked about monogamous because you're saying earlier on it's not everybody is meant to be monogamous. And that's what's going to be one of my questions now that I brought it up. Did you see a lot of married men? Oh. All right, then. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> that, that um, you yes. know, the majority, yes. there uh -huh. were quite a few. And I, I will not say I didn't. There, there were quite a few married men. And what it offered for me is, um, is being open enough to sit down and really examine how we view traditional marriage. If you look at the statistics about what marriage is, most marriages, 50% of marriages break up after 10 years. And then after 10 years, you'll see another 30% of marriages actually break up. And I think that statistics may be a little off. I think so. I think it's, I don't even think it's not long anymore. Exactly. A lot of people are not, you know, they don't have the patience for that. So Carrie, we're going to jump again. Yes. Your client base, what is it? What can you offer someone who wants to just break free and be themselves and just be, just being very sensual queen and stop locking up themselves in this box? And, you know, and that, you know, have that, you know, that hammer over their head saying, you know, sex is bad or, you know, being self-indulged is bad. You know, oh, what would you, what would a session look like for you? Somebody's here watching you and want to connect with Carrie. Well, why would they I, connect with Carrie? You can connect with me on my website. Uh, it's CarrieSutras.com. There's a little tag that's running now, and I saw it on there. Thank it's you for coming that. back up. It's coming it, back there. It, it is. will come back up, and that's where you can <laughs> reach me if you want to do individual sessions. I can also be found on Instagram. Uh, Carrie Sutras at Carrie Sutra is my handle. I also have a YouTube channel where I talk all things sex and love and relationships, and it's called Carrie Sutra TV. And if you really want a taste of me, a touch, I am coming out with a program because let's talk about what you just said, Donna, that, us, that idea of us really indulging and learning about pleasure. I always say it starts with yourself. So I'm introducing next week on the 12th, I am going to be doing um, uh, or introducing a new program called Love and Touch. And it's all about self pleasure. It's all about connecting into the power of your body, deprogramming some of these colonial and patriarchal understandings that we have been told about our sexuality mm -hmm. and creating goodness. And mm. I, actually, I, I actually walk you through some real luscious and juicy 
sessions and tools that help you activate your sexuality. And oh, your that sounds amazing. Yes. Errol Thompson is saying, would encourage to write a book. Sounds like Carrie have a lot to offer mentally to the fullest. Yes, she does, Errol. She has lots to offer. Stay tuned. Stay tuned. That is, that is in the works. <laughs> this is exactly where we need to be unlocking and embracing who we are, our divine being, you yeah. know, and the minute. And, and the thing about it, and everybody that's listening too, it's not about the act. Mm -hmm. Don't think we're talking about the act. It's so much more bigger than that. It's about embracing self. We, yes. can, we can be working orgasm. We can orgasm. And that's why she's going to have this self-love class. Yes. It's about you. It's not about nobody else. It's about that person that looks in the mirror every morning that you get up, you're looking at that person. It's Scary. Absolutely true. Absolutely. I appreciate you. I yes. appreciate you so much for coming on tonight and letting go and talking about your past experience. For sure. I, I appreciate the forum and the space. And I just want to leave everybody with this final piece that yes. recognizing that when you embrace and embody your pleasure and your sexuality, you are embracing that fundamental power that is you. There yes. is reason why when you are in the throes of your orgasm, you are going, oh God, Jesus, <laughs> amen. Just keep that in mind. Oh, before you go, Maxine is saying she's amazing. I love how she speaks her truth. Oh, yes, Maxine, you, Maxine. This girl is thank throwing you. it down like there's no tomorrow. But to be honest, Carrie, you and I need to talk about that orgasm that you're talking about because mm -hmm. too many of our black sisters and other Ooh. women are not achieving the true orgasm. No more clitoral orgasm. We're talking deep penetrative orgasm. That's what we're going to be speaking about next. Carrie, you and I are going to be talking about that because let's we're going to teach it. women how to breathe in this orgasm. Ah, let's All do right, it. let's breathe in this orgasm. Yes, yes. But before we end tonight's show, before we end tonight's show, Carrie, thank you. And for those that's just just joining us, we're all different. Yeah, we're all not made equally. We can't do the same thing like everybody else. Yes, and but some. Go ahead. Uh, sorry, and I was just going to say to your point, each one of us has an individual experience of how they can be in this beautiful space of their sexuality and pleasure. Yes, they, the, yes, they can. So yes, they not can. every experience is the same. And not ex everybody's experience is going to be the same. So we, we're, we're going to be a judgment-free society. Yes. What I do is what I do. What you do is what you do. And all we're just here to do is just love, love upon each other. Exactly. And, 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 have, this journey. Yeah, and have this journey. Ex and experience this journey. Mm -hmm. And this journey is what? This journey of life. Mm -hmm. We're just here for a short time. We're going to experience and love every journey. I remember when I got divorced mm -hmm. and I keep saying, oh, I wasted 25 years with the Not anymore. It was a journey. It was a lesson. Right. It was a beautiful lesson. Hmm. And the minute, and the minute I said, and the minute I start blaming is when things start shifting. I took the blame from my parents, my ex-husband. I just keep taking the blame and start owning and just start loving. And this is where as women, this is why we have this program is to show understanding and showing love and to, to, to and speak our truth. Absolutely. Because and what I love about Carrie too, geez, I'm going to be going over. But what I love about Carrie is that yeah, she's speaking her truth, but this is something that's not inside her anymore because she's bringing it out. Oh, you know, so inside she's not running. You know, she's regurgitating her past and her story, right? And it, and, builds, and it builds character as well. Oh, absolutely. And I think that is such a beautiful point that you're making. And I, I just want to reiterate that that we are the sum of our story. Yes, we are. Yes, we are. And when you can come to that spot where you can embrace all that it is, the good, the bad, and the ugly, that is when you can truly set that next level of healing. Yes. That's what real healing is. Yes, it is. And as I said, oh, but before I leave, you guys just keep an eyes out for my book that's coming out. Heads up, shoulders back, and own yes, your yes. shit. It's a book about embracing your sensuality. Love it. This is a Donna Savage with Talk with Savage Desires. Please, please share. 
um, put a comment. Let's talk about it. Also, let us know what other topic you would like to hear. Again, Terry, love you, my sister, and right. I will see you offline. We'll Peace out. Bye. <laughs> Bye.